Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Blissful Literati. Now that we are all locked down in our own homes, are you getting more scolded than often for your mischief, or are you being mollycoddled still? I bet there must be some of you for whom this lockdown has become really difficult. For on one hand, you cannot meet your friends and go out, and on the other, you are tired of staying under the continuous observation of your parents and their constant nagging as what to do and how to behave and all that. Don't get angry. I'm just kidding. I'm sure you're all having a great time, except the stay home part, but you're all having a great time, unlike this unfortunate kid who is constantly being shivered by his parents. Wanna know about his condition? Then let's jump right into this poem by Michael Rosen. But after a brief stop to learn about this considerate poet. So Michael Rosen was born on 7th May 1946 and his first work was a play titled Backbone. His notable works include We Are Going on a Bear Hunt, Lunch Boxes Don't Fly, No Breathing in Class, etc. You see, all these titles are quite relatable and they often come as sets of instruction which a grown-up might give, a teacher might give and which we as students can easily relate to. No wonder that he was honored by Maine made the Children's Laureate a position that he held from 2007 to 2009. Now let us, before we start the poem, let's hear some words of praise about this great poet. And let us have a look at what Elizabeth Riley has to say about this man. She says, Rosen's work as a whole presents an enchanting child's eye view of life. Though he likely mocks adults, this is mostly done in a good-hearted way. He emphasizes the importance of feelings and imagination and encourages children to explore their emotions and think for themselves. As he says in his poem, Chivi, Grown-ups say, speak up, don't stare, don't interrupt. Can't you make your own mind up about anything? This comes from... Elizabeth Riley's work, You Tell Me, and indeed, Rosen rightly captures the frustration of a child as he faces the grown-up world. His sympathetic attitude makes him a successful interpreter of their feelings and emotions, and that's what makes this poem such a relatable one. Let us now have a look at the themes of this poem. For themes, we have the importance of freedom. The poem also talks about the importance of acknowledging feelings and creative imagination. It talks about the importance of giving children their own space and not just children. Every one of us need our own space. Finally, it talks about the importance of letting children think for themselves and this is really important. Unless children are allowed to think for themselves, unless they are allowed the freedom of thought, they will never grow up to be a self-dependent individual. They will always need your guidance, the parents' guidance. So always remember, it is very important to let children think for themselves and to encourage their thought process. A child may think differently. A child, every single child is unique. But being unique, thinking differently doesn't mean that you are wrong. So don't bother next time when somebody tells you that you are not doing it right. You are doing it in your own way and whatever way you do it, it is right. Because you are doing something. At the end of the day, that matters. Instead of sitting down stagnant, instead of waiting for instructions, if you do something on your own, that really matters. So remember, you are allowed to think for yourself. You are allowed to be encouraged for your thought process, no matter how different, how unique they might be. Let us now have a pictographic depiction of this poem. And this man, I mean, just look at his expression. Does he look like someone who would ever appreciate you? I think not. 
That frown is never going to leave his face and no matter what you do. And he will keep finding faults with you to the end of his life or yours. Now let us read the poem first. Grown-ups say things like speak up, don't talk with your mouth full, don't stare, don't point, don't pick your nose. Sit up, say please, less noise, shut the door behind you, don't drag your feet, haven't you got a hanky, take your hands out of your pockets. Pull your socks up, stand up straight, say thank you, don't interrupt. No one thinks you're funny. Take your elbows off the table. Can't you make your own mind up about anything? So this is the poem. Now, as we're about to jump straight into the summary and maybe stanza by stanza analysis along with the word meanings, let us take this moment, take one moment to stop and think, why should we bother reading this poem? What is in it for us? Let us start with an anecdote. You will find this, I think, even in your textbook. Uh, when Michael was five years old, his mother took him to a nearby school for admission. The teacher asked, what does your mother call you at home, child? Michael don't, came the confident reply. So you see, more than his own name, Young Michael heard this phrase, Michael, don't. The negativity, don't do this, don't do that, don't say that, don't behave like that. Okay, all the no, 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 all the naysayers, whatever he was doing, his parents were unhappy. Now, some of us are unfortunate like that. But remember, these naysayers, what they forget is that once they themselves were children and they did the same thing that you are doing right now. So don't be afraid. Don't be confused. Do as you like. Be whatever you want to be because this whole world is your game. You are going to own this world. So keep doing whatever you love to do. Let's have a look at this image. It says all grown-ups were once children, but only few of them remember it. It comes from the little prince. We have here creativity versus logic and reason. You see, in all the achieving, the grown-ups forget that once they too were little and as children, they too did the same childish things. Only a very few can remember that, like this writer here, and also Mike Rosen. Now let's talk about the summary of this poem. Grown-ups are never happy with the way a child usually behaves. They constantly come up with a series of instructions. Their instructions dictate a child's behavior and attitude and goes on to determine their manners. Yet the grown-ups ironically want a child to decide things on their own. You see, when you are dictating what to do at every step of someone's life, you cannot expect that person to decide things on his own because he is being habituated. It is becoming his own habit to always wait for instructions. His confidence level has sunk to a record low. He is not at all confident about his own ideas, his own plans. He simply waits for you to tell him what to do, how to do. So let's now come to the tone of this poem. You see the narrator assumes the persona of a child. From the moment he says grown-ups say things like, he separates himself from the grown-up world. The list that he provides of the grown-up instructions seems like coming from the honest annoyed heart of a child. The second and last tonal element is perhaps even more important. There is a hint of sarcasm in his voice, though it is gentle and without malice. He mocks those grown-ups who, after dictating every movement of children, want them to come up with their own confident decision. 
By the way, sarcasm is a humorous way of saying the opposite of what is meant, usually to mock or to criticize. Let us now talk about the elements at play here in this poem. We have the speaker, perhaps a child, and the grown-ups he talks about and the series of instructions and expectations. Let us now analyze the poem part by part. So the first part, grown-ups say things like speak up, don't talk with your mouth full, don't stare, don't point, don't pick your nose. The speaker seems to be really irritated and starts without any introduction. Straight to the business and his main agenda is what grown-ups say. He provides a long list of their constant nagging. If a child speaks softly, immediately a grown-up will tell him to raise his voice and we all know what happens when you speak with a raised voice to a grown-up. They will rebuke you if you speak with food in your mouth. They don't care how important it might be to you. They don't want you to either stare at something or even point with your fingers. And definitely they don't want you to put your finger anywhere near your nose no matter how much it itches. Everything is prohibited as a rule. The no-sayers don't. Let us take a look at the word meanings. Grown-ups, adults or the people who are mature. In this poem, the speaker uses it to mean people who have forgotten about their own childhood. Stare is to look at something with a fixed gaze, to look continuously for a long time. Point is to direct someone's attention to something by a physical gesture, usually using a finger to that direction. May also be used to criticize or find fault with something by pointing it out. Grown-ups. Grown-ups, they really don't like to be criticized. Pick your or one's nose. To insert something, usually a finger inside the nostrils to remove something like dried mucus. Let us now come to the next part of this poem. Sit up. Say please. Less noise. Shut the door behind you. Don't drag your feet. Haven't you got a hanky? Take your hands out of your pockets. You see, the speaker continues with the list of instructions. If a child is just lying down, minding his own business, a grown-up will come and immediately ask him to sit up. When a child wants something, like really wants it and urgently asks for it, a grown-up will first teach him manners by asking him to say, please. They don't understand the value of a child's time. They cannot tolerate noise and definitely not the sound of a child dragging his feet. They are always observing where a child is wiping his or her nose, hands, all those things. And they are ready with a handkerchief question, whether they have the handkerchief or not. If they have it, then why are they not using it? They will even decide where a child is to keep his hands. Let us now talk about the word meanings of this part. Drag your feet or drag one's feet is to move slowly, intentionally to delay progress. It causes irritation because of the sound of one's feet being dragged on the ground. Hanky is a shortened form of handkerchief. Now, before we move on to the next part, let us stop here for a moment and recollect what we learned till now. You see, by now the general tone of the poem is quite clear. The child is irritated by the constant nagging of the grown-ups and he has a right to be. After all, how long can one tolerate the constant do this and do that and don't do that, don't do this all day long? It seems that no matter whatever the child may do, which is perfectly logical in a child's world, the grown-ups are always ready to find some fault with it and with their own instructions. Their only aim in life seems to be remotely control every movement of a child. Now let us move to the third part of our analysis. Pull your socks up, stand up straight, say thank you, don't interrupt. No one thinks you are funny, take your elbows off the table. Can't you make your own mind up about anything? So basically with this part we come to the end of this poem. But again, 
It's a never ending series of instructions. I'm very much sure that these instructions continues even where the poem ends. As per the grown ups, a child must always dress smart and look smart. That means the socks pulled up all the time, shoes polished and always standing straight. Instead of letting them enjoy what they have got, the grown-ups want children to follow proper grown-up manners of saying thank you. They don't tolerate the children suddenly speaking in between an adult discussion. They believe whatever child has to say, because he's a child, all those things can and should wait. They rarely encourage their weird talents. They don't even nurture it because they think it is offbeat and hence useless. Finally, they scold the child for not being able to decide anything for himself and therein lies the irony. If you are constantly dictating somebody to behave in whatever way you want them to behave, you cannot expect them to have their own personality and their own decision making capacity. You are ruining that with their own hands. Now let's move on to the word meanings. Interrupt is to disturb a discussion with questions or remarks while another is still speaking. No one thinks you are funny. Nobody appreciates what you are doing or have done. Sometimes children to do some weird things which, though not at all important in the grown-up world, are super cool like touching one's nose tip with tongue or burp continuously without reason. I remember when I was in school, I had a friend who could burp continuously without drinking. He would drink a little water and he would continuously burp 15, 16, 20 times. That was his record. So that was his talent. In a gathering, such children, they may show such and other talents with the hope of being appreciated. But instead of appreciation, all they get is discouragement. Finally, make your or anybody wants mind up to decide something to reach some conclusion. With this, we come to the end of this poem and as we finish this poem, let us contemplate on the ending. You see, the poem ends just the way it started. A list of instructions which goes on to show that no matter what a child do, how a child behave, adults are never happy and unless they remove the smallest mark of childishness from the children, they really appreciate the childlike weirdness. Instead, they want to turn the children into fine gentlemen from the childhood. They want to make them into robots. Perfectly programmed. A child's acknowledgement can be easily seen in the way they jump right in the things in which they get and enjoy it to the fullest. Instead of watching their fun and excitement, grown-ups want them to suppress their excitement and focus more on manners. They are, they are snubbing, they are snuffing their own natural reaction to things. They remotely manage their behavior and expressions and every movement and yet expect them to decide for themselves. That is simply not possible. Now before we move on to the title, let's have a little time on the sarcasm, the biting edge of sarcasm in this poem. You see, sarcasm is a humorous way of saying the opposite of what is actually meant to mock or make fun of something. Usually it is used to make people aware of something that they may correct it. In this poem, Rosen assumes a gentle sarcastic tone. The final sentence of the poem is not an instruction, but coming after a long series of instructions, it tries to make the grown-up readers realize that if a child is constantly nagged about what to do, how to behave, he will never learn to think for himself. If all his imaginations are discouraged, then he will never dare to become a creative. Finally, we come to the title. You see, Webster defines Chivi as to tease or annoy with persistent petty attacks, and Honeycomb notes to chivy is to nag, to continuously urge someone to do something, often in an annoying way. The speaker in this poem shows how the grown-ups are constantly urging the children to behave in a definite manner continuously, to the point where all the childlike behavior is criticized and discouraged. 
Since the adults referred to in this poem are constantly nagging the children, the title Chivi is perfect. So here we come to the end of our discussion. We at Blissful Literati do hope and keep our fingers crossed that you don't ever come across such grown-ups and enjoy all the live-long day to your heart's content. However, you must also understand that it is not that our parents have nothing else to do but to nag at us. They only have our best intentions in their heart and sometimes they may become overzealous in making us perfect. With that thought, let us call it a day here. If you have any doubts or queries, don't forget to leave a comment. We will soon come with another chapter, another story to regale you with. And till then, bye bye.